Everybody give a hand clap and a shout to the Lord. Father, we bless you for the opportunity to give. We thank you for this atmosphere. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's do our declaration out of Zion. The perfection of beauty. God shines forth. The Lord my God causes the righteous to shine forth as the sun. His awesome hand has formed me. His creative spirit inspires my mind. His, skillful hand, he skillfully guides my hands. Therefore, I boldly declare, I am set apart for excellence. The ruler of the universe has assaulted my horn among the nations. He sets my feet on high in his strength I rise. By faith, I press forward towards the prize of my highest calling. I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. He is the vine, I am the branch. In him I abide, in him I blossom. As it is written, God who commanded light out of darkness has shown his light in our hearts. We have his treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. This year, I commit to excellence. I commit to exceptionalism. I commit to do the extraordinary in Jesus' name. Amen. If you believe that is your portion, hallelujah. Praise. Please, let's take our seats in the presence of the Lord. I want us to especially appreciate if you grace for this great, great, hallelujah. Praise the name. Sometimes you will know the songs, but it depends on who is singing the song. It's not just the song, but the person and the spirit behind the song. Let's once again give a big hand clap unto the Lord for this morning. We are all excited this morning. We are privileged to be alive, and, uh, and uh, we are welcome to the second service of our Thanksgiving celebration service. And today we are very, very blessed because God has sent his servant to us. This is a man I knew way back before I went to Bible school. And uh, over the years, our relationship has grown very deeper and deeper. And uh, he is a, a, a pastoral figure in my life. And uh, there are a lot of things that I learned, I learned from him. Anytime we go for pastoral training, there are a few things that he shares. And I take them very seriously. And I also observe it. Um, one of the things in life is that you, it's likely that you can be around information and knowledge, but you can miss it. You must not be sat down to be taught. You must catch things. And it's very important. I remember one of the trainings we went, he said that if your church is less than 500 as a pastor, and you can't give your, your people don't have your telephone number, then who are you? <laughs> and I, so I liked that lesson way back when I was pastoring less than 500 people. That's why this, my telephone number is the easiest in this church. And I pick telephone calls. Amen? I know some of you call me at very weird times. Like this week, somebody can call and say, Pastor, are we having service? After having one whole week, he didn't show up. Then he called me, Pastor, are we having service? And sometimes I have to patiently say no. <laughs> but I've learned a lot from him. And uh, he's one of our senior most pastors. If you want to learn pastoral ministry. You see, there's a ministry, it's a pastoral ministry. He's one of the pastors I've come across. There are people who are called pastors, but they are not pastors. They don't love the sheep. They love themselves. So, right after this um, video introduction, the next person you see is this awesome man of God. The reason why God has placed money in your hands, the reason why God has given you that factory, the reason why you know and know and know you are so blessed by God and you have the capacity to influence the kingdom of God, the reason is that God blessed you for the house of God.
Reverend Dixon Tufosapon is the head pastor of the International Central Gospel Church, ICGC, Jesus Temple, Kufridia, a thriving church in the Eastern Regional Capital of Ghana with its headquarters in Accra. He serves as a presbytery member of ICGC with Dr. Mensah Autobel as General Overseer. He is also the Regional Overseer in charge of the Eastern and Volta regions of Ghana. He's a pastor and a Bible teacher by calling. Listen, you must be crazy when the song of the Lord is lifted. You may be in your seat, but listen to me, that seat should not restrict you. You may be at the back, but it should not restrict you. When you are coming to the house of God, some of you must bring two shoes. One for dancing. Crazy dancing. Come and give it to the Lord. We must learn to be crazy for God. When will I ever stop dancing? Until the day God calls me to heaven. I can't stop it. We must learn to be crazy for God. We must learn to clap for God. We must learn to shout for God. When we say we must shout, we must shout with all our might. Somebody, will you put your hands together and give the Lord a shout? He's an author of four books, which includes Foundation for Christian Maturity, Negotiating for More, and Divine Lessons for Promotion. He's happily married to Lucy and are blessed with four children, Seth, Rejoice, Joy, and Jude. Ladies and gentlemen, with a round of applause and a standing ovation, please welcome the ministry of Reverend Dixon to For Sapon. Hallelujah. I want you to walk to three gorgeous people and tell them you look so gorgeous this morning. Let's sing that song. I bet to you. Congratulate somebody. Move around and congratulate somebody. And say a happy anniversary to all of us. Everybody, everybody, just move This is for you, come on. Wama Yansu ya sepine. Come on, go home. Yera dinya miya batampe. Come on, enjoy it today. I want you to congratulate somebody.
to feel free today. I came to thank God with you. Raise your right hand. Oh, yeah. Oh, Somebody and say, Uye, 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 So good. Mm, you are so good. You are so 
little seed that was planted it didn't have so much hope but because God was part of the story today the story is different I remember pastor brought me to this land with oil he said I want you to come and pray for us we poured the oil we trusted God and there were prophecies God said so many things about this church. I can see it. So I am so passionate and emotional. Anytime I watch you on TV, I say, look, I saw this. But like I said this morning, this is just the beginning. You must count yourself being a part of prophecy. And assume your role all out because this is just the beginning. God is going to move and blow people. The expansion is coming. The new work must start. It must start. Don't delay God. I speak by the spirit of the Lord. Go ahead. Start it. As you are sitting here this morning, I saw the bigger room. It's huge stage. This place will be an overflow. This place will be the youth hall. Ibanolo Zik Akoshti. thank God for your life. On behalf of Dr. Otebel, we want to say congratulations. You've made ICGC proud. You have expressed what is in the heart of Dr. Otebel. An excellent church. Before we began excellence, you have gone ahead. I want to encourage you and your beautiful wife who is my friend the biggest hamper I ever had in my life came from this woman those of you who don't know I used to pass nights in his house some years ago so we didn't just meet at church and uh, he's been such a blessing. All of you know his zeal for the kingdom of God. And we are with you for the greater thing you are going to do. Greater works is beginning here. The Lord strengthen you and your wife. I'll pray for you after I finish preaching today. 
And I trust our lives will never be the same. And for those of you who in leadership who want to bless God for your life, let's put our hands together for all the leaders for standing by your pastor to achieve this. God bless you. Please take your seat in the presence of God. Today being the day of Thanksgiving, one of the things the Lord has laid on my heart for some time now is to speak on Thanksgiving. And so I'll go straight to this point. I'm speaking on the spirit of Thanksgiving. The spirit of Thanksgiving. Let this message change your life forever and ever. The spirit of thanksgiving speaks about the attitude of gratefulness. The attitude of gratefulness. It's a key that unlocks the blessings of God upon your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so Psalm 34, 1 to 4 says that I will bless the Lord at all times. This is an attitude. This is coming from King David. I will bless the Lord at all times. It's an attitude. Look at somebody and say, this is an attitude. He said, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. This is an attitude. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Wow. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. May your soul boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I saw the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Psalm 100 and verse 4 says that enter his gates with thanksgiving. Ah, oh, we bless God. What then is thanksgiving? Very simple definition. Thanksgiving is the act of expressing gratitude to God for what he has done expression of gratitude to God. It is the acknowledgement and the celebration of God's goodness. Expressing your gratitude to God. Saying, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I give you praise. Celebrating he, what he has done for our lives. Bible says in Psalm 105, it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord and call upon his name. Psalm 50 verse 14 says that offer unto God thanksgiving. It's all over the Bible. This is the attitude of the child of God. Hallelujah. Now let's begin today's message. Turn your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 17 and verses 12 to 19. Luke 17 12 to 19. And as he entered into a certain village, this is talking about Jesus and the ten lepers. There met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go. Show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God. Save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. If you know a little bit about leprosy, leprosy is a very bad disease. Very, very bad. Because when it attaches itself to your body, it will chop that place. If it touches your nose, your nose is gone. If it touches your hands, your hands will be eaten. 
If leprosy touches itself to your toes, your toes are gone. Under the Old Testament, it was equivalent to sin and abomination. Under the Old Testament, if you are a leper, you are an abominable person. And so you are not permitted to be in the public place. You don't stay in the vicinity. They take them out of town and have a place for them outside of town in a leprosarium. So, even if you wanted to marry somebody, you were interested in somebody, once you have found a leprosy, you can't marry the person. That would be so painful. You can't live in town. And those who are even in a leprosarium, if they should come to town by some means, they have to ring a bell and say, unclean. Unclean person is coming. Unclean person is coming. Then people can give way. What a disgrace. What an embarrassment situation these people found themselves in. And this one comes to you for life. The only hope they had was that they had heard of the son of David, Jesus Christ. That this man, he can turn every impossibility into possibility. He raised the dead and he can cleanse this because he's done some before. So all their hope was that one day they will meet this man. And lo and behold, one day Jesus was in that village. When they saw him from afar, the Bible says they shouted with a shout. I'm sure they combined their voices together. And they screamed and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And Jesus heard him. And Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest. That was the instruction. And whilst they were on their way going, they were healed. They were cleansed. Immediately they discovered they were cleansed. The nine of them ran to town. Some of them ran to their families immediately to go and show themselves to their friends, to their mothers, to their uncles, to whoever, and probably to their wives they wanted to marry. To their fiancé, and said, I'm back! But one of them who was a stranger, came back to Jesus. A stranger. He was a Samaritan. He was not a full Jew, half Jew, half Gentile. They were disrespected. They were not the high class people. They were not respected. And that is the kind of person who returned and came to Jesus. And fell at his feet. And screamed. And glorified God. This morning we're going to talk about that. Because sometimes. We respect ourselves so much. And we, we trust ourselves so much. And we believe in ourselves so much. That when God does things for us. We are not even able to recognize it and come back and say thank you. When we come to church, sometimes, sometimes those who dance a lot, sometimes are the poor. Sometimes are the youth. Are the young, young boys. And those of us who believe in ourselves. Those of us who call ourselves gurus. Money mongos. You know, we stand and clap. In a very nice way. Because we went to Achimota. Because we are Legonites. Because we are from the royal family. It took a stranger to return and give glory. I pray this message will change our lives forever. Somebody say amen. I want to talk about four things quickly that you should know about thanksgiving. Number one, whenever God does something for you, he expects you to come back and say, thank you. He is not a Ghanaian who says, it's all right. Don't mention. God never says, don't mention. 
he expects you. As a matter of fact, some of you, God is still waiting. And he's been waiting for a very long time for you to come and say, Lord, thank you. Number two, God never rejects thanksgiving. Almost like the first one. He never rejects thanksgiving. Number three, whenever you thank him, you are saying, Lord, you did it. I ascribe the praise to you. Lord, you did it. Lord, you did it. Reminds me of a story of a guy who climbed a tall coconut tree. And when he got to the top, he was afraid to come down. And so he was at the top there and he was crying. Because he was afraid. And people inspired him and said, come, we will catch you. Come, we will catch you. And he jumped. They couldn't catch him, but he landed. And then he said, experience. <laughs> Some of us, after the miracle has happened, we think it's by our experience. When you don't give him back his thanks, you are saying it's experience. Number four, whenever you thank him, you are asking for more. You are asking for more. Ladies and gentlemen, did you know what Jesus told this guy? After he praised and gave thanks unto God, Jesus looked at him and said, your faith has made you whole. Thanksgiving completes our miracle. Thanksgiving establishes your promotion. If you've just had a promotion and you refuse to come and thank God, it may not be established. The guy was cleansed, but Jesus said, your healing is not complete. I don't know about the others. Probably it returned or not. But Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Thanksgiving will complete the proposal you have had. Thanksgiving will let that which you are believing God materialize. Thanksgiving will establish your healing forever. If you have seen a little of what God can do, listen to me. Thanksgiving will establish the rest forever and ever. Somebody say amen. amen. Your faith will make you whole today. Take advantage of the worship today. Take advantage of this atmosphere. And today pour your heart onto God. By the time you leave this place, there will be an establishment in your life. Somebody say amen. amen. There are four major areas I've chosen to talk about. The Lord impressed this on my heart some years ago. And I've been preaching it all over the world. Four major areas. Four reasons. Four reasons why you must thank God every day. Four reasons. Four reasons why. If you don't have any praise in your heart, these four reasons. For these four reasons, you must always thank God. Number one, thank God for creating you. Thank God for creating you. I want you to look at somebody and say, thank God for creating you. Uh, you have to thank God for allowing you to come into this world. Let's hear what the psalmist said. The psalmist said in Psalm 71 and verse number 6 to 8. It says, by thee I have been holding up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels. My praise shall be continually of you. Can you see the connection? He said, God, you are the one who sustained me in the womb. And at the ninth month, you are the one who brought me out. There are millions of people who want to come into this world. That's why when your father and mother met, all of them rushed. But you were the only person who had the visa, who had the entry permit to come into this world. If God had not allowed you into this world, you would never be here to express what you call your gift or your talent. Do you know how many who wanted to come into this world? They rush in their billions. But most of the time, only one person, only two people, we may call them triplets and quadruplets, but just one enters into this world. And there are many people who want to come, but they got aborted. They got aborted. I know of a woman who had had 
miscarriage for 18 times. 18 times. And the worst of it is after the 18th time, she was divorced. She did everything. The babies couldn't stand. And some of you, your mother will tell you that after three months, you were coming out. Some of you, after four months, you were coming out of the womb. But some way, somehow, God prevented you from being aborted and held you in the womb until the ninth month. And bless God, that Sunday morning, your mother went and delivered you and you saw the light of day. If you wake up and you can't praise God, then something is wrong with you. If you wake up and you can't sing unto God, then there is something wrong with you. Some of you, just because you don't have money, just because you are not married, you don't see the reason why you should praise God. But for God allowing you to come into this world and becoming a part of the team in this world, place your hands on your heart and somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. Some of you, at the fifth month, you almost came out. At the seventh month, you almost came out. If some of you even came out the seventh month, but God still kept you. Some of you were in incubators. Wave your hands, but the Lord saved you. The Lord protected you. And the Lord brought you into this world. The day they said a man has been born. A lady has been born. And people gathered together to give thanks unto God. It was just by the mercies of God. I bless God for the day I was born. I bless God for that Sunday morning. I was told it was time for church. That is when I was born. Ah, I give praise unto God. And I thank God that he allowed me into this world. Where would you have been? Many have gone into the water closet. Many came as blood. Many came as whatever. But some way, somehow you were born. Even some of you, when you were delivered, your head was big. Nobody thought you could survive. But some way, somehow, this Tikolonkolo with Nankron here and Unai you survive. You survive all the hymns. And today, you are seated here wearing your white, wearing your dress, wearing your shoe. If you cannot lift up your voice and give thanks unto God, if you cannot shout, if you cannot put your hands together, if you cannot make a joyful noise, clap your hands, all ye people, and give the Lord a shout offering. Today, you don't need anybody to inspire you. Today, you have to look at your history and inspire yourself. Today, you don't need anybody to say, clap your hands. Today, you don't need anybody to say, rise to your feet. Today, you don't need anybody to say, shout out to God. Am I talking to somebody who was given a visa to come into this world? Clap your hands, all ye people. And give the Lord a shout of a rain. Oh, yeah. I want to bless God every day for the rest of my life. That I was also given the permission to come into this world. Hey, where will I be? It is just by the mercies of God. It is just by the grace of God. It is just by the mercies of God that you are here. So, if there is no reason to thank God, thank God that you have come into this world. Number two, number two, you have to thank God for your salvation. Bless God every day, every morning for your salvation. Somebody say amen. amen. Do you know that sometimes we forget about our salvation? And just because we don't have a car, just because we have not gone to a brochure, we can't give thanks unto God. I was trusting God for a contract, it doesn't come. You come to God and say, raise your hands and you do this. This is no raising of hands. This is no raising of hands. Some of you will never dance here. Say, me, why should I go and dance? I'm waiting for this contract that does not come. Why? Why? There's no reason. And sometimes we thank God for the wrong things. And we don't bless God for the right thing. The Apostle Paul says something in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and 15 to 17. Let me read this. He said, this is a faithful saying. 
and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Paul says, I am chief of sinners. How be it for this cause I obtain mercy. Ah, that in me first Christ must show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which you hear after believe on him to life everlasting. And then he said this. He said, now unto the king eternal. Unto the king immortal. Unto the king invisible. The only wise God be honor and glory forever and ever. This is the reason for this song. This is the reason for this praise. He said, I was the chief of sinners, but God had mercy on me. Can I talk to somebody this morning? If you have no reason to thank God, thank God for your salvation. Some of you, there's no reason why there was no way you go to heaven. Because though we're all sinners, you were a bad sinner. We were sinners, but some of you were chief sinners. The apostle Paul presided over the death of Stephen. He was a bad boy. And some of you, yes, it is only God. Because you committed all kinds of atrocities and sins and abortions upon abortions and upon abortions and abortion is death is murder. But after all that you did, he had mercy upon you and he loved you and he forgave you and cleansed you from every field. Some of you have smoked everything in this world. Every kind of smoke has entered into you. Some of you have quashed every, every drink in this world. You have drank it. From whatever to whatever, you have drank everything. From a petition to, to Ogogoro to whatever to Agabado Libosa. But God have mercy on you. And he saved you. And dressed you. And cleansed you. And brought you to church. You look so beautiful now. You sound so good. Some of us were so filthy that the words that were coming out of our mouth. But some way, somehow, he still looked at the same mouth and he saved you. He still looked look at the same lifestyle and he saved your life and brought you to church and put a call upon your life that you should go forth and win other people. For this reason, if you wake up early in the morning and you don't sing and praise God, then something is wrong with you. I want to give you the chance at this time to put your hands together and make a joyful noise and praise His name. Ah. Listen. me from so the kind of person you were and God still looked at you and God still saved you because if God were to choose because the things you used to do criminals 
murderers. He changed their lives. Ah. The kind of embarrassment you had. I was talking about the story this morning. A guy who was in school and he stole somebody's phone. And they made a search. They searched everybody. But this teacher, when he got to this guy, he put his hand into his pocket. He took it out quietly. The boy was expecting him to be ashamed before this whole school. He was expecting that he would be called. And he was waiting for embarrassment. He waited and waited. They never called him. He was broken. His confidence was gone. Because all this time he didn't know when they were going to call him. He completed school. After many years he met that teacher. He said, I've been looking for you to thank you. That that day when you found it in my pocket, you didn't make it public. The teacher said, when I was searching, I closed my eyes. So I didn't see you. When God was saving you. When God was saving you. He was not saving you to shame you one day. Some of you. God doesn't even know that you have sinned before. God doesn't even remember. He says your sins and your iniquity are remembered no more forever. You don't visit it because he doesn't even remember that you've committed abortion before. He doesn't even know that you were a thief. He doesn't. He said I closed my eyes so I don't know the one whose pocket I took this. If you wake up and you can't thank God, Something has gone wrong. I want you to look at the person next to you and say, you must learn to be grateful to God. He saved you. He made you beautiful. Look at this mouth which is prophesying. Look at this mouth which is singing praises unto God. I met one of my mates who was such a bad boy in school. But now he was saved. And he was prophesying. I look at the mouth that was prophesying. I say it is just by the mercies of God. I knew way Hashem come. I knew it. Se mumu binya ko ponche mo boni swa. Enka ubra so de man enka fire. More so standing here. His mercies are new every morning. So Paul said unto him, eternal. The invisible, immortal, the only wise God, unto him be glory. Clap your hands, all ye people. <laughs> Alabada. Listen, some of you had no control over your life. You didn't like some sins, but you were always committing it. But how come God saved you out of this sin? I was talking to a gentleman, he said, Myself and my brother, we were smoking. We all got born again. But pastor, I escaped. But my brother couldn't escape. My brother has gone mental. Some of you, God saved you last minute. If you had gone for that last fornication, that last smoking, that last drinking, it was going to turn your life around. I remember the, the week I got born again. I got born again on Sunday. Monday morning, I received a letter from a girl who said he was interested in me. <laughs> Young guy, I was like, Satan, you are late by 24 hours. <laughs> That's how come I never saw any woman in my life until I married. He saved me last minute. <laughs> Some of you, he saved you last minute. He saved you by the bell. So every day when you wake up, you have to thank God for your salvation. Some of you, there was no way you go to heaven. Some of you, if you like, hey, but by the mercies of God. I had somebody who had a dream and he was going to heaven. When he got to the gate, they say, you, go back. One chair won't come so. And then we Oh, 
Psalm 116, I have a verse 1 to 6. He said, because he's inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call upon him as long as I live. He said, the pains of death surrounded me and the pangs of hell laid hold on me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called upon the Lord. Oh Lord, I implore you, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, our God is merciful. The Lord preserved the simple. I was brought low and he saved me. Have you come close to death before? Have you come so close to death? Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you got sick. And you knew that you are not going from this hospital back home. Somebody said, the next person close to my bed died. Pastor, he had the same problem. Just about a month ago, there was a funeral. One of my church members, she was crying. I said, why? He said, I was with this man in Kolibu. We had the same problem. This man died. The doctor says, there's no more cancer in you. Ah. So, if God delivers you from this, and you can't thank him. Some of you, you drive every day. On the motorway. On the highway. You go to Kumasi. You are going to Techiman. Some of you are drivers. On this bad roads, 
you always go and you always come. You, you haven't thought about that. It's not because you're a good driver. It's not because you have a good car. The Lord just preserved your life. And you are not better than those who died. You are not better. You are not better than them. Nyankupon no sevu life. He changed your life. He protected you. He is the God of escape. You escape so many times. You escape accident. Ah, somebody say, Pastor, accident. Nami wamo nyoti minche hene u nyoti minche hene so u pastor mini mi dienti nyankupon. He kept you alive. So that the rest of your life, you will sing unto him. You will praise him. Clap your hands, somebody. Your two hands, your two hands are not for decoration. Your mouth is all not only for eating. Come on, somebody. Give praise unto God. Ayabado Rico You have been flying Accra London, Accra USA, and you always come. It's not KLMO. It's not British Airways. It's not Emirates. It is God who preserved you. About four years ago or five years ago, we went to teach in Atlanta, our pastors. And I finished my lesson. So I was coming back. I was going to New Jersey, American Airlines. Nice flight. From beginning to end. Nice. We we're just about to land. From nowhere. From nowhere. A storm. And our plane just came down. She grind. All the lights and all the whatever and the oxygen marks and everything. And the guy picked the plane again. There was a doctor by me who was shouting. Every, almost everybody was shouting in the plane. And we landed. It was on the news. They took the black box. I was inside. And I always knew that it was because of me. That God saved our life. No, because you have money, so you have the best airlines. If God does not preserve your life, Kobe Bryant, with his beautiful, beautiful helicopter, I looked inside. Beautiful. He was gone. My tomorrow, he was gone. But you always go and you always come. It is oh sorry now to me to no more. Something is wrong with you. If you come to church and you want to be forced to come and bless God. I, 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 I. Some of you, you know what the Lord has done. Before the song begins, you are singing. Before the music starts, you are already dancing. And you tell people, I know why. I know why. It is a manawasia. Mayo. Today, every thanksgiving you have hoarded, you have to bring it out. You have to do it double, 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 double. Hey, that sickness that killed your friend the same sickness oh. but you were discharged you couldn't even believe it you couldn't even believe it I was sharing a story this morning an old man, 70 year old man had a problem with urinating so he went to the hospital and they did a little surgery for him and then after that they brought him the bill he looked at the bill and he was crying and the doctor says no, 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 no we can do something about it he said it's not, it's, not, it's not the money. But I've been 70 years on earth. God took care of me and he never brought me a bill. God never brought me a bill. You touch me for 15 minutes and look at what you have brought me. Some of you, if God were to bring you a bill, how would you pay? 
If God were to bring, he never brought you a bill. You are 40 and you are still fine. You are 50 and you are still fine. Nothing about you has been chopped off. Nothing has been removed from you. It is just by the grace of God. It is just by the mercies of God. You wake up early in the morning and your shout must be louder than everybody. You come to church and your dancing must be louder than everybody. You come into the house of God, your shout must be louder than everybody. Clap your hands, somebody, and give the Lord a shout offering. Today is the day of Sun TV. Somebody raise your hands and say, and I say, I say, I I say, I so normal as if you are not a sickle cell patient. You are so normal as if you don't have diabetes. You are so normal as if you don't have this sugar problem. Nobody even knows it. It is the Lord who has sustained you. Hey. And so for some of you, when we mention church, you should be crazy. When we mention praise and worship, you should be crazy. Because you know where you are coming from. He saved you. He saved you. He saved you. When I completed school, God did the miracle. I've just completed SU president. Fire! I was coming for ministry. I was moving from my father's house to where I sleep. Those days, you you sleep in some places. Around 8 o'clock, I was going to where I sleep. I was walking on the veranda. And God said, stop. Young as you president, I heard the voice of God and stop. And God says, take a stone of where you are and throw it in front of you. It doesn't sound normal. And just by where I was standing on the veranda, there was a stone. I take it and then I threw it in front of me. Then I heard a noise. Then I saw somebody coming with a lamp. When the person came, lo and behold, there was a big cobra. And the stone has hit the head in the dark. Because it doesn't make sense. He saved my life because he had a purpose for my life. You know it. You know yours. You have a testimony. You know it. You know it. You, you know it. You know it. Some of you, there are more demons in your families. In your village. They come always to your house. But they come and observe your beauty. But they can't touch you. Under the Old Testament, they inquired of the Lord and asked for permission. Permission to touch Job. But in the New Testament, after the blood is shed, access is denied. <laughs> they will come against you one way, but they will flee before you seven ways. It's not because there are no more witches in your family. It's because God has called somebody in that family. And by you, every evil has been silenced. Every day you have to thank God for your life. You have to thank God. It's not because of your beauty. It's not because you are intelligent. It is just by the mercies of God. It's not because you have a good doctor. Thank God for our doctors. 
It's not because you exercise. Yes, I know people who exercise and they die at the place where they are exercising. Ah! So every day you must thank God for your life. Bless God for your life. Slim people die. Slim macho people die. So don't say it's because I'm slim. It is the grace of God. Put your hands together for him who sits on the throne, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hey. Check it five years ago. Now, the man you say has come to worship you. The boy you say has come to us. Boy you say, boy you say, come to us. The man you say, has come to us. Yeah, what did my bed do? Look at yourself, look at yourself. Open heavens, empty your pie. blessings upon you. Somebody will say, Pastor, this last one I don't agree because I have not been blessed. I see my friends in cars. I see my friends marry. I see my friends flying outside Ghana. Togo, 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 to go, to go, to go, cram in Kohoda. Niger, Niger, cry minimum. Now we are blessing. Is this blessing? The, I have seen your problem. The problem is that your definition for blessing is wrong. Your definition for blessing. That's where your problem is. There are people who have money, but they can't sleep. They have to hire lawyers. They have to drink all kinds of drugs every day before they can sleep. But you, when you touch your bed, when you touch even that hard bed, some of us, our, our bed is like wood. But when you touch your bed, you snore. You sleep like a buffalo. You snore. It is a blessing. Pastor, Pastor, 
Minda, Mintiminda, Sikawa, air condition, or so Timinda. We said, Pastor, 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 do you know that I've not been to a restaurant before? I've not been to a restaurant before. A restaurant. I can show you how you spell restaurant. <laughs> restaurant, I didn't know. And Coco, I'm already five years. My friends went there, and then when they, 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 were, they were eating spaghetti, spaghetti is talia, talia. Can they watch it? Ubenya talia also. Unimunti, unimunti. You are crying by heart. When you want pesie, and you call bibi. You say God has not blessed you. Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Somebody say yes. You are blessed, but you don't know. You are blessed, but you don't know. Pastor, my dear, forty minutes ago, I was in the car. My auntie said, "I think I have cholesterol." Oh, see, can he be paying me while you pet? What were you here for more cholesterol? Ibado Koba, Nyamia Sevu. Some of you, if you were having cars and this and this and this, by now you are dead. Like by now you are dead. You think God has not blessed you? He has blessed you. So, Mr. Pastor, look, I have only one shoe, one shoe. Want you and they wait there. You want you. That's why you can't dance in church. That's why you can't praise God. When you meet somebody who has no legs, he hasn't got legs. You will thank God for your life. Our definition for blessing is wrong. Your children are so intelligent, and because you don't have money, you think, "Ha! Your children are so intelligent." The, the other day, a doctor calls me and says, "Pastor Dixon." This years ago. Your children are so intelligent. Why is it that even me, I'm a doctor, my children are not intelligent? But you don't know this. You don't know this. Those same children are going to turn your life around in future. You have to redefine what blessing is. Some of you, you can't eat some food. You can't eat this. You can't eat this. You can't eat this. Mamumubi from Lapewa to Black Kalatus to every whatever you eat and you are fine. What's in your means now? I didn't be now person your mayor mouth. He bad all over. He has blessed you. Every day you raise your hands and say, I thank you. I honor you. I bless you. I give you praise. Oh, Pastor, but look at me. I'm almost 50. I don't have a house. You will have. It will come. It's coming. My, my friends, look at, look at their front. Look at their house. Look at some of them. They can't sleep in the house. So every they say, who is there? They are surrounded by barbed wires. They are surrounded by electricity. They are surrounded by dogs. They are surrounded by you. You live in an open house. Even when you open your door, nobody will come into your house. And you are crying. You say, God has not blessed you. So what If you understand, you will praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the afternoon. Praise him in the night. Dance when there is no song. Clap your hands, all ye people. We're going to just worship for a short time and then we'll go. You are blessed. Look at, look at the person that says, you are blessed too much. Let, look at someone and say, you are too blessed. You are too blessed. Oh. You are too blessed. Look at someone and say, you are too blessed. 
Ayabado Roboko Shotoko. Some of you to look. God blessed you. You started going to a brochure. But you come to church, you won't dance. Hey. When you see car, you have cars. You can't dance. Today I heal you in the name of Jesus. Today you'll be the first person to come and dance here. God saved you. You have to let the world know. You have to let the world know. Raise your hands. You've done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. Raise your hands and say,
worship him. Come on, feel free and worship him. Come on. and say, oh, he did.
Jesus. Before we leave this place, tell Jesus something. Jesus. Not easy to reach out. Missy, what? Everybody in this room, come on, lift up your voice. pastors died some even got property and it was taken away from you I'm speaking to open heavens every member of this family raise your hands you want to say most blessed come on sing it now most most everybody come on sing it now as a church when there was no hope you've clothed us with beauty you have sustained us and strengthened us today the world look at us and they can praise you we want to thank you for your servant we want to pray for you and your wife Lord Lord on this day, I ask for fresh oil, a new anointing upon your son. Give me the oil. I'm standing here. As a member of the presbytery and on behalf of Dr. Otabel, I say receive. For the next 10 to 20 years, fresh oil come upon you. Great ministry, great expansion, capacity to hold what is coming. Receive a new anointing to pastor the people of God. A heart to love them. Shh. A heart to love the people of God. A heart to push the work. Fresh oil. Fresh teaching mantle come upon you 
sharp prophetic ministry. The Lord strengthen your prophetic world. The Lord strengthen you. The Lord use you to break fresh grounds. Capacity for expansion. Ilabahatoko. For they will ask, is this the head office? Is this the headquarters? Imoluba Haduko Shiada Krasti. Isuya Anda. I will make you great. And I will expand you. I will place an anointing. Yes, Lord, upon you. As a mother of this house, the bar to all stick. A heart to bless. A heart to teach. Your body in For many shall find solace in this church. Many shall run from near and afar and submit to your ministry. The Lord protect you from death, from accident, from evil, from evil men. The hand of the Lord rest upon you and your children, your children's children. And I use you as a point of contact to pray for your leadership and for every member of this church. Raise your hands. Fresh oil touches you. The Lord raise your head. I see pastors from other ministries coming to submit to you. And you are going to direct them as how it is done. I see an authority. I see greatness. What God has said will come to pass. On Poyego, Salibo, on Kostelebi. Fadi Ombroste Ika. This is just the beginning. Greater things are coming. In Jesus' name. You may go back. Still stand.